everybody getting started here I'm gonna do some sharing as I encourage you to do as well I've got my computer here so I've got all my full media set up it's a little slow getting started hi everybody welcome hello Estela my name is Zach Haller welcome to real progressives we've got a special exclusive real progressive side stream happening today because the people's summit is going on in Chicago and it is an absolute nightmare uh, to see what is being conned uh, by the Democratic Party apparatus and repackaged so I need to very briefly uh, share this on my Facebook so this is really important to be calling out right now because the People's Summit is going on in Chicago right now. And it I was suspicious of it to begin with. Part of the reason why I didn't, I'm in Seattle, I didn't want to make an effort to pay all this money to the basically what seemed like the Democratic Party, right? It looked like they were just trying to take your money. It's like, oh, People's Summit, cool, I'm going to sign up. And it's like, wait a second, why do I have to pay $200 to attend a People's Summit? Oh, I can apply, you know, I can apply for a low, lower, like, why do you, like... Everything was just red flag, red flag, red flag about the People's Summit to begin with. And I know Bernie did one last year, right? You know, that's kind of the weird concerning part of it is Bernie did one last year. And it was right after he was co-opted by the Democratic Party, which we know at this point is just mind-blowingly fraudulent. So it's like everything that we, you know, everything that we once knew about the Democratic Party. I mean, everything has been blown open, everything has changed, and there's really no turning back based on what we've seen from the DNC fraud lawsuit and how the DNC is continuing to defend what they're doing. Okay, I'm gonna share this one last thing. So, the, basically, the DNC is continuing to defraud people. They're just calling it the People's Summit today. I mean, it's the same dark money groups that are hiding, uh, and I'm going to get into all of this. I just need to take a few moments to share this because everybody share this as much as possible. We need to get as many people on this as possible because this is going on in Chicago right now, and we need to do the best we can to mobilize our activist network of indie media to get people in Chicago to be holding these people accountable right now. This stuff is going on right now. Get on Twitter. Share everything. Literally, the actions we take right now can challenge this event ongoing in real time, and they they need to answer for why they are avoiding their conflicts of interest. Why are they avoiding talking about the Syrian war? There's a lot of drama going on right now. So please make an effort, extra effort right now to share this out because this is legitimately the way that the Democratic Party sandbags progressives who would normally be out here rallying against war. It sandbags the progressive movement by saying, oh, let's get all the progressives together in Chicago and keep them quiet and keep them not talking about war and try to remind them that there's like, oh, some kind of mixed problems that we should be dealing with and not flat out calling out the serious military intervention that's happening in Syria among all places, among other places, but also they're hiding from the DNC fraud lawsuit. This is their ongoing act to try and keep us from talking about the real issues that are going on. And it's a scam. They're they're taking their money they're taking your money while they're doing it. It's a fucking scam. It's so obvious that this is the continuation of the DNC and everything they're doing. It's so obvious. It's a complete scam and we should all be mobilizing right now to put them on full blast for the conflicts of interest and hypocrisy on display from their corporate and military industrial complex sponsors. Super. Sorry guys, I know, I know Jordan is nice and I know Nomiki is nice and all these things. I'm sorry, like, it sucks to have to be this and I know I'm pissing off so many people, but I don't care if people are like sad that I'm breaking this news to them. Look, unfortunately, these are the cons. Don't shoot the messenger. These are the cons. The people who are trying to get you to trust them but won't let you answer serious hard questions, those are the people that are literally sent in as the wolves in sheep's clothing to be the ones who try and tone down the progressives who are calling out war and calling out fraud legitimately they are using progressives as shields that's exactly what they're doing they're using progressives as shields to block criticism of the democratic party the democratic party is the party of war it's insanely nefarious it's sickening and i'm gonna do one more share on my twitter 
because we need to get this shiat everywhere. And we've got some really interesting uh, thumbnails happening here. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. A planet activist will put on that one too. Okay, let's see here. Hold on. Okay, and then one more, one more, one more. Sorry for the last minute stuff, guys. Share. I need to copy a link. I need a link, I need a link, I need a link. I need to share this on my Twitter. The Democratic Party is the party of war. That's legitimately what everybody needs to... They need to understand that that's the way that it is now. Barack Obama was president for eight years, the first president in history to be president for all... For, to be at war for all eight years. They wanted more of that. They tried to lie to get more time in office. It's unbelievable and they're continuing to do it. And it's just, it's really, it's really seriously a concern. So I want to start out by um, talking about a few of the folks that are involved at the People's Summit. So yeah, the Democratic Party is the the Republican Party, they're the same thing at this point. At this point, basically, you can just think of it as the Democratic Party is, their function is to sandbag and take money and take energy from the progressive movement to, to keep all of those people incapacitated and politically disenfranchised so the Republican Party can move forward with their agenda, which is the same. Obviously, this is their strategy. This is why you have two parties. It's the core of the duopoly. This is why controlled opposition exists. The controlled opposition is the Democratic Party trying to capture all the progressive energy and movement and mentality and wisdom and sandbag it so the Republicans can move forward as the ones with that with those policies, which, of course, those policies are favored by the Democratic Party, which is why the Democratic says, oh, look, guys, we're going to use identity politics, we're going to use moralizing, we're going to use all these strategies to keep all the activists quiet while the Republicans do the dirty work for us. That's legitimately what's going on, and more people need to be really, really not only cynical in real time, but be unafraid to call this out because this is part of why it's a con is because it's like no me kikos okay so here i am so i'm going to start from the beginning welcome to real progressives my name is zach heller thanks for joining me. i'm doing a special segment today on the people summit in chicago which i didn't go to because i was like this sounds like a rat and i'm not going to spend a bunch of money to go pay to be in the presence of this conference it's at the mccormick place in chicago which the last time i was at the mccormick place in chicago interestingly enough was for barack obama's re-election rally i was involved in both the obama campaigns in chicago which some of you know and so Last time I was at McCormick Place, I, w I was there for the Obama rally. And there's actually a picture of me. There's a picture of me in Time Magazine from that re election rally there that night. It's really interesting irony at this point. But McCormick Place, that kind of gave me a question mark to begin with. I was like, McCormick Place, hmm, that's kind of weird that a people's conference would get the like biggest, most you know, corporatist and like location for a summit. I mean, there's just red flags to begin with, but basically the, sh the People Summit kind of got kicked off this weekend and notably Tulsi Gabbard was supposed to be speaking at this event and she's no longer speaking at it anymore. And if somebody's seen why Tulsi's not there, please post it. I've been looking and I haven't found out. And part of the reason why I'm so suspicious of this event is because Tulsi's not there and Tulsi would be saying legitimate reasons why she's not there if she weren't. My sense is this is the exact same situation that happened with her in the DNC and the exact same situation where she's calling out the DNC for their Syrian, their support for the Syrian intervention, and that's why Tulsi's not there. Susan Sarandon said that she's not there because of conflict. Fair enough. Tulsi's a different person than Susan Sarandon. So that was kind of my first real recent red flag that kind of Tulsi, they they had her in here for a while and then at the last minute she's no longer in there move on yeah it's a george soros operating event i mean it's basically hillary clinton george soros the young turks it's all of the dark money groups that legitimately the young turks told us to vote for hillary clinton turned around in a second oh burning loss bummer oh no such thing as fraud no big deal vote for hillary i mean it's like they think that you're gonna forget that it's so ridiculous and we don't forget it and the democratic party as we've seen in the dnc fraud lawsuit is happy and comfortable committing fraud and spending money and raising money for themselves in the name of putting it to the good use of the people and they're spending it on themselves. People don't understand how serious of fraudulent behavior this is. They're literally saying, give us your money, we're gonna spend it on charitable things. This is legitimately the Clinton Foundation. This is everything about Hillary Clinton and everything about the toxic Democratic Party that says, oh, give us your money, we're good people, we're philanthropists, we're gonna spend it on the people, we're gonna spend it on the people. No, 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 no. They 
spend it conning the people. They don't spend it on the people. They spend it scamming the people for more money while taking money from big money groups to continue to allow them to take more money from the people that they're supposedly helping. It's such a fucking scam. It blows my mind and how they're not all in prison. I mean, we're getting... We're getting steps taken with these lawsuits to get these people to stop their corrupt ways because it is unbelievable. So, People Summit's happening in Chicago. So I didn't go. I'm out here in Seattle. Thank God I didn't go. And so this morning I wake up and I'm like, okay, I don't want to see what's going on at the People's Summit because I just kind of want to ignore it and just have my own nice peaceful brain today. But I was like, okay, I'm going to just pop on and see what's going on. So the first thing that I saw this morning when I woke up, which at Pacific time, so I slept in a little bit, so it was a little bit later, but I woke up and I turned on the media panel and I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. Perfect timing. I'm turning on the media panel. And so I'm like, Okay, first of all, if the People's Summit really wanted to have independent media and really wanted to have people's media, they would have real progressives. They would literally have real progressives. They would have called up Steve. They would have called up all the people in our indie media network, and they'd have been like, look, guys, we need actual indie media voices to lead this. Did they? Is Steve there? No. Am I there? No. Is H.A. there? No. Is Tim Black there? No. Is Debbie there? No. Red flag, red flag, red flag. They obviously don't want us speaking there. This is not a people's summit. If it were a people's summit, it would be free to attend. They charge $200 or a reduced fee of $40 for people to attend. I mean, it was just, there's just so many red flags to begin with. It's insane. But Alan Smithy, everyone's favorite tweeter, actual flatticus, <clears throat> posted a great thread today that I want to mention a few highlights on because basically what we need to really be thinking about oh yeah Tim is oh yeah Tim is attending but he's not you know, Tim Black should be somebody that is given full stage at this event Tim Black is one of the people that should be front and centered at this event if they wanted people to actually think it was a people's event and they should have give, given Tim the volition to plan it the way he saw fit period he should not be attending as an attendee he should be one of the people leading this event and he's not Weird. That's that's a red flag to me. So Alan Smith, the actual flatic, has posted this thread. And part of the reason that I think this is really important to hammer on is we need to be policing dark money as much as possible. And the biggest problem that we have is dark money. And this dark money is coming in obviously all over, from all over the place. And Hillary Clinton's campaign is over, but all of those people are still rich and they're all still trying to influence politics. They're not going to take any break. They're going to keep putting their money into different entities to try and hide the fact that they're trying to use their money in a political manner. And it's not like they're trying to put it in like local programs like repipelining Flint themselves. They're not doing anything to even be like, oh, I'm going to give this money to the people in a certain way and like stimulate programs and movements that need of you know need work on a local level they're literally just paying themselves in these systems of democratic special interest groups that some are super PACs some are lobbyists some are media groups some are congress people it's all just one incestuous network <gasps> oh my god you guys the pride flags i forgot the pride flags are on there now okay 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 oh this is so gay but so am i so we have to do this okay stop everybody for one second i need to see the gayest thing ever i need everybody to hit the pride button on there Thing, hit your pride button, pride, 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 get all the flags going. I want to see all the flags. Come on, remember when we did the thankful flower and there were a million thankful flowers? There they are. Come on, push, 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 push those flags. Push those flags. I want all those. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's so gay. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. Do we think they're talking about the gay men in Chechnya and Russia who are getting, you know, basically throwing concentration camps at the people's summit? No, they are not. Oh my god, okay, I think I'm good. I, I think probably somebody got some image of me eating these rainbows. Okay, guys, thanks. I just want all these pictures of all these rainbows flying in front of me. <laughs> anyway, okay, so there's a pride flag rainbow. So if you, want the, if you want the flag rainbow, it just looks good. Sorry for those who don't have the pride flag rainbow. Anyway, okay, so sorry, I digress. I totally forgot that that flag was out there. Happy Pride Month, everybody. Uh, so, anyway, the dark money groups are what I really think that we need to be policing in this, uh, in our media revolution. And so I want to take a few moments to highlight a thread that Alan Smithy uh, tweeted, and I should put this in the, um, I'm going to put this in the live stream comments real quick, if I can. Let's see here. So Alan Smithy is this 
unfathomably intelligent person on Twitter who has basically all of the facts and details for every possible thing you could ever imagine. And he has a great thread about all of the different individuals who are involved in the People Summit and what their uh, corporate relationships are or what their dark money relationships are. So basically, I just want to touch on a few of them and I'll try and get this uh, link in the, the feed as well. But basically, Alan says, let's talk about what the word progressive actually means for a second because it's a terrible description we should stop using. And and this is interesting because this kind of ties into how the special interests are kind of kind of labor unions and kind of not. So he says, you know the progressive movement was heavily characterized as anti-immigrants by anti-immigrant sentiment largely driven by labor unions. The Labor was driven to join the Democrats largely because they wanted to keep the judges out of labor disputes, which is correct. These were mostly shitty people, yes, but there was one thing they agreed on that was government corruption was bad. So that was basically the premise of labor unions is if they wanted to avoid having corrupt judges be making rulings on people. So it's it's kind of this weird mixed bag because obviously <clears throat> you know, political energy when mobilized can be used for good or for bad. And it really depends on what the motives are. So he goes on. This was the era of the muckraker. Journalists like Ida Tarbell and Lincoln Stiffens were fought corruption tooth and nail. Fast forward to today. Progressives no longer fight against industrialization, urbanization, but I hope they stopped hating immigration. So that just leaves corruption. Best symbolized these days as the prevalence of dark and soft money running our government. Now let's look at our progressive heroes. Nina Turner, who sits on the board of one dark money group and advises another. Love Nina Turner, but we've got to start asking her to explain this because she's getting involved in these and she has a show now and I'm super excited to start watching it, but I hope that Nina is a real leader and talks about her conflicts of interest very transparently because if she doesn't, we're going to lose her to the dark money and that's basically what we're on the kind of, we're on that line right now, which is really the scary thing. Roseanne Tomoro, who chairs the PAC, sits on the Dark Money Group's board and is a VP with the AFL-CIO. So Roseanne Tomoro, who has done outstanding work at the head of the, um, at the head of the, I'm not frozen, if I'm frozen, let me know. I seem good over here. Uh, Roseanne Tomoro, who's done a lot of great work uh, for the head of the Nurses Union, still also runs a super PAC and, you know, is very involved in the kind of growing movement of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party specifically the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, right? We don't want to have to be stuck in the Democratic Party anymore. So Rosanna Moro, as much as I've loved so much of the stuff she's done, she's going to start need to explain her involvement as she continues to move forward and as she hosts events with the Young Turks. Why is Roseanne sitting up there with Nomiki Konst being like, this is fine? Like, it's not fine, and that's part of the problem. Bernie, obviously, unfortunately, Bernie's no longer someone that we can really just kind of like hoist up as someone who's, you know, a person of complete transparency and virtue ever since he was co-opted by the Hillary Clinton campaign. I think he's doing as much as he can to do a good job. But the fact that he's keeping us in the Democratic Party, to me, only could be him being like, well, I'm going to I'm going to help the Democratic Party crash and burn because that's what needs to happen. The, the Democratic Party is beyond repair, in my opinion. And so anyone who's helping it crash and burn, I guess I'm thankful for that. But it's not, you know, it's not cool to lie uh, or to kind of misrepresent your goals or your actions. So basically, you know, Linda Sarsour, Linda Sarsour is kind of this other person where it's like she and DeRay to me are the, like the biggest tools for the Black Lives Matter movement and for the Muslim Solidarity movement. Linda Sarsour has been funded by George Soros for a long, long, long time. So it's everything that she shows up at. It's like she to me is emblematic of George Soros and so is DeRay. Uh, DeRay is not involved in this, but Linda Sarsour was one of the people who was revving up the crowd at this event. And I'm like, if I were there, I would be like, nope, 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 nope. We are leaving in droves. So basically, you know, whether or not the whole event, you, whether you're not even looking at the event and the organizers of the event who are corrupt, it you need to look at the people also. And Unfortunately, this event is basically run by dark money and soft money groups. And because of that, this event is not featuring any conversation about that, which is specifically the biggest problem that we have in our government is dark money and soft money. And so the fact that they're there pardoning that and saying it's okay, obviously, is the entire reason that this is a problem. And yeah, 
So, you know, that's the thing about the People's Summit is they're trying to hide from the fact that they're the Democratic Party apparatus because they know the Democratic is a bad brand and that they've got really, really, really low poll numbers. But at the same time, they're trying to leverage the people who are still hoping that the Democratic Party will stay involved and stay progressive and take money from them and keep them from talking about the war, which is the other big thing that I really, really, really want to drive home is the fact that this is a complete distraction from we have absolutely, absolutely horrifying crisis in Syria, among other places. But the whole military industrial complex is a democratic, is a leading Democratic Party apparatus, right? Obviously, the Republican Party is very heavily involved in the military industrial complex as well. However, because of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, the two most powerful, influential people over the past eight years who have been building up the military industrial complex while Barack was president, while Hillary was Secretary of State, though the Democratic Party now is the party of war. So as much as the Republican Party wants to be the party of war, they haven't been running the show for the last eight years. So even if they wanted to be the party of war, it hasn't been them making decisions on how to fund the war. They're more focused on oil, right? The Democratic Party is more focused on banks and more focused on war. And those are the people that we need to be calling out. And all of these people in the center trying to say that they're your friend, trying to say they fight for the people, but not actively calling out dark money and not actively actively calling out the military industrial complex, which is completely funded and pushed by the Democrats. Those people are either ignoring these two huge, 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 huge crises, which yes, there are a lot of domestic crises we need to deal with. But in my opinion, especially as we're looking at the national, the national landscape, Dark money is the number one problem, and to the extent that dark money continues to control our politics, we're never going to know what we're getting, and that needs to be called out every, every, every opportunity possible, including now, including today, including as many chances people get. Everybody's taking pictures with Jordan. Everybody's taking pictures with people. It's like, okay, I know that you're excited to meet them, and that's kind of cool, but at the same time, it would be so much more powerful for the revolution if you didn't just take a selfie with them and you actually ask them a hard question. If they are an actual legitimate person, they will give you a truthful answer. And if they don't give you a truthful answer, you might not actually want a selfie with them. Because that's going to be a fucking red flag right there that not only are they lying to you, but that that's the whole point of this event is just to get everyone together so they can lie to them and take your money while they're at it. Because they didn't do enough of that when the Democrats were running. They didn't do enough fraud taking your money while knowing Bernie would never be the president. They didn't do enough of that last year. They want to continue to do that so they're hosting the people some. And they're saying, oh, you want to come, Zach? It's, that's going to be Two hundred dollars. Oh, two hundred dollars. Cool. You're gonna need, you know, I need to pay for food when you get there. You need to pay for drinks while you're out. You know, it's like it's all just a money. It's just another sale. It's just more money. They will say everything they can to get you to participate and to take your money. We have seen that over and over and over and over from Hillary Clinton, Obama, and the Democratic Party. They will say anything that you want to hear to get your money. That's literally their op apparatus. They don't give a shit about actual voters mobilizing. They don't give a shit about stopping the horrible regime change that's taking place in Syria and elsewhere. They, in fact, support those things, and that's why they're trying to distract you and take your money talking to you about fluff. It's ridiculous and there should be absolutely no tolerance to these people. It's like at least the Republicans aren't bullshitting us and trying to tell us like, oh, give us your money. We're not going to spend it on something that we're lying to you about. The Democrats are literally defrauding people and saying we want, we are philanthropists. We're taking your money to give it to the people while we are allowing dark money groups to continue and the military industrial complex to continue to challenge Trump. Obviously, the entire prof, the entire function of the Democratic and establishment at this point is to erroneously and stupidly challenge Trump to try and impeach Trump, right? They're not doing anything for the people. They're continuing this combative strategy towards Trump because that allows them to ignore all the major issues like dark money and the military industrial complex and just try and continue this strategy of like raising Trump as the Pied Piper. It's so insane. And I'm working on so many articles about this. It's so hard to write as much as needs to get written in a short period of time. But the Pied Piper strategy that they instituted is literally still ongoing. The Democrats' strategy is to 
protect Hillary Clinton and everything she stands for, including the military industrial complex, obscure Bernie Sanders and the actual independent people. Obviously, Bernie's been enveloped and digested in the deep state now. So it's like, you know, the real progressives, the entities that are outside of the mainstream media, we are the ones that are now getting obscured. I mean, did you see I have a hit piece out on me now already? It's like, we should, where, where was the democratic institution sticking up for me on that? Obviously, they want the indie media out. They're continuing to favor Hillary Clinton and her corrupt establishment, continuing to obscure Bernie Sanders and the people who represent the actual revolution, and continuing to elevate Trump as a Pied Piper. Instead of actually criticizing Trump for the things that he legitimately needs to be criticized on, such as the massive billion-dollar arms sales that are going to Saudi Arabia, these are absolutely horrifying things that the Democratic Party is not calling out Trump for. What the fuck? They aren't calling him out for it because they're fine with it. They make money off the military industrial complex. They want the military industrial complex to continue to do well. They don't want, they, they're egging Trump on basically. So they'll attack Trump for all this meaningless shit, knowing it's not getting them anywhere and knowing that it's going to allow Trump to continue to build up the military. And it's just like, it's so exorbitant already. It's like there's no money coming into social programs or infrastructure or anything in the United States. It's all just getting funneled into the military. And it's horrifying. And here are the people, and Caitlin Johnstone and I had a podcast that we did a couple days ago. And we were able to touch on this. If you can check that out, I encourage you to do so. But basically, they're smearing journalists. They're smearing indie people constantly because we are continuing to be the ones that are calling them out for their bullshit. And all the people who are in the Democratic Party and their related apparatus are participating in that and by not supporting us in actual indie media it proves more of the point that they don't want our voices in what they're saying and that actually what we are saying is correct criticism of them because they're running from it they're not addressing it and debunking it they're literally running from it running from it hiding from it and trying to discredit the people who are saying it there are so many red flags it blows my mind and people need to stop being you know a, you know sympathizing with them because they're not going to change. They're going to continue to defraud you and take your money as long as you'll give it to them while patting themselves on the back for successfully distracting you from the fact that they're the party of war and that money actually lets them do more to build their operations that are going on behind the scenes for the deep state and continue the military industrial operations around the world while distracting you, the nice progressive that is a peace advocate but is so distracted from the fact that you like Jim, like Jimmy Dore or you like Justin Cher Jordan Cher and you like Nomiki. It's like they are literally the centrist who are the gatekeeper that keep us from getting to the industrial military industrial complex directly. And it's like, it's really bad. So stop having sympathy for these people. And yes, there are people who are attending the People's Summit that are good people. Obviously, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's being put on by the corporatists who are co-opting the movement. And there aren't people, if you wanna have a, a media panel that's actually about working people, why aren't working people up there talking about how the conglomerated corporate media has, has just completely poisoned and destroyed American dialogue in the media. Those are the types of conversations that need to be happening on this stage. And guess what's happening? No, Mickey Coast is up there literally congratulating the Young Turks. They're saying, oh, allied media. So this is this whole thing. So this morning, when I woke up, I turned on this fucking panel. And here's No, Mickey Coast and a guy, I think her name was Winnie Wong, being like, so the Young Turks are allied media and we need to work together with our allied media to move the conversation forward. It was the most bullshit, soft-spoken crap I've ever heard. And they literally sit there. I mean, all of the Young Turks is at the People's Summit, which is your biggest red flag to begin with. They all told you to vote for Hillary. They're not discussing the DNC fraud lawsuit. Their entire channel at this point is Trump bashing. They don't criticize the Democrats at all. This is literally the new face of the Democratic Party. They're trying to brand it through the Young Turks and the Justice Democrats to seem cool, and they're using Jordan and other people as fronts for that. Until Jordan and Nomiki quit and go independent and take their salaries from the people that are patronizing them on an individual level, they will always be controlled opposition. They will always be paid by the same corporate media that funds the bet, the major corporate conglomerated media in the United States that funds the military industrial complex. I'm sorry. They're, they seem like nice people and they seem like they deserve your trust, but they are literally the wolves in sheep's clothing in our first war is the media war and we need to have absolutely no tolerance. No, Miki gets up there and like I've had a lot of nice exchanges with her so it like kills me that she's just so slimy like this with the rest of them now. She's up there saying 
Let me find it. So she's saying, let me, she, oh, so she was basically like, the Republican, so here's this really interesting thing. The media panel that they had on this morning, Nomiki Konst was on there, and she said that we need to fight against state media without accepting the fact that uh, the Young Turks basically is 1%, and they are basically state media because our media is completely controlled by the rich people, the deep state, basically. Of course, Bill Clinton signed the Telecommunications Act of 1994, which allowed for this conglomeration to happen. So it's all very Clintonian to begin with. So it makes perfect sense. This is all a complete extension of what they've been trying to do to the media to conglomerate. It's basically the globalist agenda to conglomerate all of the media under one small umbrella and basically control what everybody thinks. But, you know, don't forget the fact how much Jill Stein and third party voters were smeared by the Young Turks and Nomiki and all those folks during the lead up into the election and after. So Jimmy Dore, I mean, Jimmy Dore, he said a lot of amazing things, and I love a lot of the things that Jimmy Dore has said, but again, he still works for controlled opposition. He still is part of the TYT. He's still at the People's Summit repping TYT there, and TYT is not disclosing their conflicts of interest. So here is Nomiki on this panel saying that so they bring up Breitbart, and I'll get back to that. But basically, they bring up Breitbart, and they say, oh, do we need a Breitbart of the left? And, like, you know, is it, you know, I can't believe what they're doing. And Nomiki basically says that they it's not okay for the mainstream media to have an agenda and that they have conflicts of interest that they aren't disclosing. Like, it was the most mind-blowing hypocrisy I've ever seen. She literally gets up there as the representative of a major media company that has the most glaring red flag conflicts of interest that they never disclose, that deceive people on a regular basis and are still promoting you to participate in the party of war and fraud. And they literally get up there and say, I can't believe the right isn't disclosing their conflicts of interest. Oh, you can't. They, they're just going up there with agenda. It's not okay. It's the most bullshit. I know you are, but what am I? Like... It's so messed up that, like, they have the audacity to put the right on blast for something that they are doing themselves and denying that they're doing or ignoring the fact that they're doing it. It's like, like, think about that again. If you know something is so bad that you're calling out the Republican side or the right side, the right, if you're calling the right out for doing it because you know it's bad, that means you know it's bad. If you're doing it too, you are bad. It's straight forward. It blows my mind how they don't understand how disgustingly hypocritical it is to get up and say, that side is doing it, it's totally wrong. While they are doing the exact same thing that they are verbally saying is completely wrong and unacceptable. It's unbelievable to me. And these are the people that want you to trust them. These are the people that want you to pay $200 to come pal around with them for the weekend. These are the people that want to keep you in the party of fraud and war. I'm just legitimately going to call the Democratic Party from here on out the party of fraud and war because that's all they are. Nobody's even saying, oh, yeah, you know what? The DNC fraud lawsuit is really bad. We need to figure out a way to kind of restore faith in the Democratic Party because it looks really bad. We need to get some of those faces out of there. They're not even saying any of that. They're legitimately just saying a minute minimize, minimize, minimize. And it's like, there's different levels for it. $200 is one level, $40, there's various levels. They're charging people to go. This is not an event that's free to the public. This should be an event like Bernie Sanders rallies that's free to the public. They can do that just fine. That would be a people's summit. $200 was what they were trying to charge me. And I'm not going to be like, oh, give me a discount. Like, are you fucking kidding me? This is ridiculous. So anyway, the, um, the, the hypocrisy of the Young Turks being at this event and slamming the right for doing things that they're doing is just unacceptable and people are still just kind of in this like, oh, it's the Young Turks, I like I like the Young Turks, they're cool. That, you know, we're obviously doing as much as we can here on Real Progressives to dispel that, but it's it's a huge, it's a huge problem. We need to be talking more about how to, where's the money going? That's a great question, where the money is going on the, in, the, in terms of the People's Summit. I do not know. It's probably all going right into the pockets of the people who put it on. And these are the people that are legitimately on a tour conning people from talking about the military industrial complex and trying to get people to stop talking about dark money in politics. So I don't think you're going to find any honest debate at the People's Summit about the corrosive influence of money in politics and the corrosive influence of money in major media. And we need to be talking about how to break up the big media, just like we're talking about the drink, just like we're talking about the 
breaking up the big banks. And yes, I know that they offered scholarships for the People's Summit event, and I get it, that's kind of helpful, but at the same time, this event, you cannot tell me that the millionaires that are backing this event couldn't have figured out a way to let this event be free to the public and still make money off of it enough to cover the charges of the event. It's ridiculous. The people who are funding this event, this is in McCormick Place in Chicago. Like, the, when I went to the Obama rally there when he won the election, free to the public. It's, you know, you need to get a ticket. You need to reserve a ticket. You can identify yourself and reserve a ticket free. You can do that. So if they're not having it be that way, that's obvious that they don't want the public to be there. Where is the working class represented at this event? They're not. That's it. They're not. It's a Democratic Party event. That's all it is. People are trying to think that it's like a conglomerated Green Party, Third Party, Democratic Party event. Draft Bernie is there. It's like, okay, they showed up. They may be getting some favors because they may try to represent Bernie, and maybe that's maybe that's you know, what we're going to see is the Democrats try to run Bernie in 2020, completely co-opted, and we have to have Tulsi or someone run outside, and then here I am campaigning against Bernie in 2020 because they've completely co-opted him. Like, that's completely a legitimate possible thing that could happen between now and then. I don't think Bernie's going to run in 2020 because I think partly he doesn't want to have to go through that. But I want to find another real quick article that was outstanding and really broke down a lot of the drama about the People's Summit. So I just found it and I will post these in the in the thread afterward. So this article is by Jerry White and Tom Hall and those two did an outstanding job here. And the title of this article is called The Political Fraud of the People's Summit in Chicago. Sanders and unions seek to refurbish Democrats. That's exactly right. Let me read to you for a moment. The Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party is convening a People's Summit in Chicago Friday through Sunday. Under the banner of building a political revolution, the three-day event, headlined by the U.S. Senator and former Democratic presidential party candidate, is sponsored by the unions that backed Sanders last year and several liberal and ostensibly left organizations that operate inside or within the orbit of the Democratic Party. The summit is being held under conditions of unprecedented political crisis in the United States. Open political warfare has erupted in Washington, pitting the Trump administration against the powerful faction of the military intelligence apparatus of the Democratic Party centered on issues of foreign policy. Alongside this interesting battle with the ruling class is a, alongside this battle with the ruling class, a different and more far-reaching conflict is developing between the working class on one side and the ruling class on the other. The purpose of the People's Summit is to smother, contain, and channel mass opposition into to social inequality, unemployment and poverty, and the Trump administration's assault on the rights of the working class behind the Democratic Party. This article is spot on, and it I can't recommend it enough um, that people can try and minimize the fraud that is going into this. They can try to say, Zach, it's not that big of a deal. Nina Turner's nice. Like, it's fine. Zach, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a weekend. It's no big deal. You can try to say that as much as you want, but as long as this event is hiding the reality of the military-industrial complex and what they're doing through the front group of the Democratic Party, which is the party of fraud and the party of war, it's a problem. And they're controlling the opposition, and they want people like me, and they want people like you to buy into their bullshit and to tell people like us to stop commenting on dark money and to stop commenting on war. That's legitimately their point. Their point is to muddy the waters on fraud and muddy the waters on transparency and ethics, which extends to killing people in other con countries, bombing people, unconstitutional warfare, illegal drone strikes that kill civilians. These are all things that the Democratic Party not only supports, but makes a lot of <clears throat> but makes a lot of money off of. So that is their goal, is to continue to make money off of their war, to continue to keep money in the big banks. Have they been calling for breaking up the big banks at this event? Mm, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen anything coming out of that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I would love to see a lot of big mo you know, mobilization at the People's Summit about breaking up the big banks. And if they really want to be leaders in the media movement, Movement, they would be talking about breaking up the big media. But I have this weird feeling they're not talking about breaking up big media because they are big media and they don't want to talk about the fact that they are. And they don't want to talk about the fact that the same big media that told you Trump couldn't win and told you Hillary was a shoe in and is corrupt and it facilitated the DNC strategy of fraud to make sure Hillary Clinton was the nominee before anyone had voted. These are the same people. All of the people, not all of them exclusively, but the guilty parties that can contributed to the fraud that went into the DNC fraud lawsuit, they are at the People's Summit. 
the TYT, the whole dark money democratic apparatus is there. And this, I think this probably is partly why Tulsi didn't go. I'm waiting, you know, I'm sure Tulsi's super busy, so like I don't want to specifically say that she didn't come to this because of a direct conflict with the philosophy behind this event. I'm, you know, wary to say that. But it's just very, it's just very odd that the most important person to be there, Tulsi, is not there. And also because of how outspoken she is against the war in Syria. So to me, it's just all too much of a coincidence. And basically, this event is a military industrial complex, billionaire funded event that is sandbagging progressives and trying to keep us in the Democratic Party, which is a party that is beyond repair. If we haven't seen it, obviously enough, we are, you know, as the DNC fraud lawsuit unravels, as the as the other lawsuit against the DNC for their income for their compensation inequality unravels, I mean we've had Barrington Weissenot who was killed, it, who was investigating visa fraud. We don't know if that's related to the Allen Brothers investigation that's crippling the Democratic Party Congress. People in Debbie Wasserman Schultz's little circle, Seth Rich is an un, unsolved mystery. We've got a lot of stuff that is destroying the Democratic Party. The Comey hearing, like it's so recent I can't even remember it, but I'm trying to, after I finish this video, I'm going to do a few, uh, do an article, try and finish my article about how all these Comey hearing bombshells completely destroyed the Democratic Party. And so the Democratic Party is in full disaster mode, trying to do anything they can to keep the party alive. And this is how they're doing it, is using things like the People's Event, the People's Summit, the Unity Tour. And again, it's not to say that good people aren't trying to attend this event with good intentions. The party cannot be saved. That's the problem. And it'd be one thing if the party was trying to save itself without making you pay to do it. Not only is the party trying to save itself, despite the fact that they're a fraudulent party that won't even own up to their own fraud and is funding the war and trying to push Trump to be even more of a warmonger than he is, they're trying to take your money too. They're trying to charge you to show up this event just like they tried to take your money just like they successfully maybe took your money when you donated it to bernie and they knew that that was never going to actually result in bernie getting the nomination that is fraud it always was they're going to get their asses handed to them in court one way or the other we're waiting for that to happen and until then, their their strategy is to minimize, downplay, minimize, downplay, minimize, downplay. How much corruption was just exposed in the fact that James Comey admitted that Loretta Lynch told him to downplay Hillary Clinton's FBI investigation as part of the election? That is mind-boggling. And I we need to all be actively kind of asking questions to find out how that is going to see that we try to get justice served on that. But basically, everyone who was participating in the general election was lied to by the FBI on behalf of the Attorney General, on behalf of Hillary Clinton. That shit is so fucked up. I can't even, I can't even understand, like, how other countries, we, there would be millions of people in the streets following the Comey hearings. Literally, the FBI director took orders from Hillary Clinton, not just a presidential candidate, but a corrupt former spouse of a president, corrupt former Secretary of State, corrupt person under FBI investigation that obviously wasn't uh, handled appropriately. The FBI director got orders from the Attorney General who got orders from a presidential candidate to minimize the FBI le legitimate FBI investigation ongoing because she, they wanted to con people into voting for her so she could become President of the United States of America. It's mind-blowing the level of corruption and deceit inherent in all of that. The FBI director took orders from the attorney general to downplay an FBI investigation that was, I mean, Loretta Lynch was involved in her own drama because of meeting Bill Clinton on the, the plane. It is all so mind-bogglingly corrupt, and it's like, I'm hopeful that Republicans in office make their first priority policing the Democratic it, corruption that has crippled our entire government and that has truly bastardized our democracy because it's obviously not the Russians. The Democrats not only rigged a primary, but then went on to collude with the attorney general and the director of the FBI to continue to protect Hillary Clinton going to the general election to try and get someone who was actively under FBI investigation, who was talking to the attorney general, telling them to downplay it so she could be elected as president. It blows my mind. Like, it's next level white collar crime. And it's like only, oh God, I guess Hillary's 
Illinois, kind of, but not. She made a pit stop down in Arkansas to own some slaves, so she's not a true Illinois politician, but it's just like only Illinois politicians could be so corrupt that that could literally come to pass. Like, I can't even fathom that. Like, I can't wait. My dad has given me so much shit for not voting for Hillary, and like, and a lot of people have, and I just want to be like, oh, hey, did you see that? Hillary told the attorney general to tell the FBI director to minimize the FBI investigation on her while she was running for president. She also owned slaves, but we don't even need to go there. You wanted me to vote for that? You think that that person deserves more power? And not only that, you treat me like shit for saying no? <laughs> I don't know how they say it. I don't know how they say it to us. It's like, Zach, look, the Democratic Party stole your vote. It doesn't fucking matter. Vote for them anyway, cause Trump. It's like they care so, they theoretically care so much about your general election vote, but they don't give a shit that your vote was completely duped in the primary. Like it's so inconsistent and hypocritical, it blows my mind. I can't even deal with it. So I'm gonna try and wrap this up cause it's been about an hour, but I want everyone to take this as your call to action to speak out about the People Summit now. Get on that hashtag, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, call truth to power, ask them about conflicts of interest. So that's a perfect phrase. Nomiki Kons used this conflict of interest phrase, which is the exact phrase that you're supposed to be considering when you're writing articles and you're getting paid by people who are involved in the articles. You're supposed to disclose your conflicts of interest because if you don't, it's the illusion, if not full impropriety. And it is certainly the illusion of impropriety when the Young Turks get up as a corporate funded media entity. They get up on stage and say, corporate funding on the right is wrong because they have an agenda and they're not disclosing their conflicts of interest. If you can say that, that that's bad and wrong on the right while doing it on the left, you're a fraud, liar, hypocrite, all of those things. It's really, really, really bad. If you can tell that it's a bad thing that the, the right is doing and they shouldn't be doing it on the right, then you should have the, the prudence of knowledge to understand that it's bad when you do it too. That's it. And the last thing that, oh shoot, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention. There was one really outstanding tweet or something that I wanted to, I mean, I want everyone to really go hard on the People's Summit. We need to try and co-opt the people at the People's Summit as much as we can to get them to try and speak truth to power at the summit for the rest of the time that they're there, if not full on walk out. I mean, if I were there, I would walk the fuck out. I would have been demanding a refund. I would have been like, you guys are literally trying to charge me to 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 continue this entire facade that you're helping the people when you're not you're for you're continuing to allow dark money groups to operate without disclosing their conflicts of interest and you're sandbagging an entire prog progressive conference and not addressing the military industrial crisis that we have in Syria right now period the russian warmongering that was completely all debunked in the comey hearing all of that stuff was not just done to deflect from Hillary Clinton trying to give a reason why she lost the election. It's also done to try and forego the likelihood that we are able to go to war with Russia because obviously Hillary Clinton wanted to go to war in Eastern Europe with Russia or at least by proxy through Syria. They wanted to do all of that regardless of with she, whether she was elected or not. She didn't get elected, thank God, but that's not gonna change the fact that she's still gonna continue to make money off of the military apparatus that goes into the in the building of tensions through our NATO allies and in the Eastern European region in general, it basically just completely supports the Syrian intervention. And that is what we all need to be most verbally and outwardly and loudly condemning right now is regime change in Syria and the entire People's Summit event not only is Sy Tulsi not there, but the entire event is avoiding the topic of Syria so far, to my knowledge. I asked before I, po before I hopped on this, I'm like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. If they're talking, if they're denouncing the Syria, if they're denouncing the Syrian war, why aren't they promoting it on the internet? I don't see it anywhere. I'm looking, I'm hoping that they're going to be calling out the military industrial complex. And I'm not seeing it anywhere. So if they're somewhere, let me know because it's not, it's nowhere on the People's Summit hashtag. But we need to be challenging everyone at the People's Summit right now to ask 
for questions from the people running the summit about their conflicts of interest and why they aren't being disclosed. And we need to get everyone there to be verbalizing as much as possible about the crisis in Syria and how actively we need to be speaking out against the interests of the deep state. And we need to be asking them to ask the People's Summit organizers what they're doing to de to break up the conglomerated media because that is part of the problem. We need to break up the big banks and before we can even break up the big banks, we need to break up the big media so media can actually represent what the interests of the people are. And then once we do that, we're gonna be able to do a lot more. So really, really, really fight on the front lines of this media war with me, with real progressives, with real independent journalists who coincidentally weren't invited to speak at the People's Summit. Weird, 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 weird. Um, there was one more tweet that I wanted to read real quick. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. So this is interesting, and I'm going to vet this out a little bit and maybe write about it. But basically this, real quick before I go, this media panel that I caught this morning, they brought up Breitbart. And they were like, so Breitbart, uh, should we, is that okay? And they basically go on this whole media panel slamming Breitbart and using Breitbart as the example for what's not okay. And it was nefarious for two reasons. Well, maybe just, maybe more than two, but it was nefarious first because they used this as a punching bag on the right to only say that the right is wrong and not be like, all media that does this is wrong. They tried to focus it on Breitbart. Obviously Breitbart died and he was investigating Podesta and the whole, you know, everything into Pizzagate and all of that stuff. Breitbart has a very mysterious death, so it's odd that they brought up his name to begin with. But they brought him up, used him as a punching bag, same Pied Piper strategy, used him as a punching bag, and didn't address any of the issues on the left. And there was an article recently that was saying that it was part of the Clinton agenda to try and get Breitbart to shut down. And so if that's the case, I'm trying to find that to see if it's a deliberate effort that the Clinton industry at the Clinton special interests are trying to shut down Breitbart. I know they're trying to basically neuter any of the critical media against them to begin with, but if that's legitimately one of their spoken goals or we've seen that leaked somewhere, that would confirm that the People's Summit event, at least this one media panel, is being written by people that are furthering the Clinton campaign's agenda to shut down Breitbart because this media panel was very, very odd and ironic in terms of how much they were focused on the Breitbart entity and not just focused on corrupt media in general. Obviously, CNN should have been the focus of that with all of the drama with CNN and the Comey hearing with Reality Winner, all of the drama on that. They were praising The Intercept. Nope, they should have been criticizing The Intercept. They were not talking about CNN. All of these things are red flags. So I want everyone to go forward and conquer. Let's really do as much as we can this weekend while the People's Summit is active to get on live, to get tweeting, to get on these things and call out their conflicts of interest, call out how they're co-opting the progressive movement, call them out for not centering the Syrian crisis and putting that condemning that as a higher priority and making sure that we know that we're not fooled by their bullshit and we're not going to just mindlessly give them their money as long as they'll take it like the democratic party is over there was a really 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 bad article it, well so good it's well the article was bad because the author was completely clueless also but it basically talked about all the democratic party's terrible terrible terribly low approval numbers and it's all basically falling apart and they're doing anything they can to save it but do not resuscitate let the dead democratic party carcass rot forever it could not be saved and we need to be calling out the people who are trying to save it because they're just trying to continue to keep progressives involved in their party of fraud and their party of war because it prevents us from making real change elsewhere my name is zach Keller. thanks for joining me guys this is real progressives i will be tweeting about this a lot this weekend so i uh, hope to hear more from you take it easy everybody have a great weekend